Hey there guys, today I've got a video about classes in Guild Wars 2. Picking a class, or a profession as they call it in game, can be quite hard, especially when you don't know what the class is all about. Even for experienced players, it could be quite hard to determine what class you should play next. In this video, I'm going to cover every profession and their current elite specializations in about 1 to 2 minutes. The goal of this video is to give you the basics of each class and their elite specializations and help you determine what class is best for you. I don't want to make this video overly detailed for new players but since I'm going to cover every profession and their elite specializations in Guild Wars 2 this video could get quite lengthy therefore you can find timestamps in the description of this video and skip ahead to your preferred profession before we start if you have any questions during or after the video leave them in the comments I'll try to help you out the best way I possibly could and for more Guild Wars 2 videos don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to leave a like if this video helped you out all right enough intro let's dig right into the video before we're going to break down every profession here's a short little subjective summary if you want to get right into the game oh and keep in mind that every race can play every profession the races are only for your personal story and for the aesthetics if you're looking for an easy profession to start off with then I would advise you to pick either a warrior a guardian a ranger or a necromancer these professions aren't too hard in terms of mechanics and are relatively easy to get into there are also intermediate professions. I would advise these for people who are more familiar with the game's mechanics. These professions consist out of the Revenant and the Engineer. And if you're new, I would hold off from the Elementalist, the Thief and the Mesmer, just until you're more familiar with the game. These classes could get quite overwhelming and I remember that I found these particularly hard to master when I just started the game. But by all means, choose whatever you prefer. Moving on to the profession breakdown. Starting off with the first profession, the Warrior. The Warrior is a heavy armor profession that most of you are probably familiar with. It's basically available in every game you play. As you're dealing damage with the warrior, you will see a bar above your skills getting fuller. This is a unique mechanic of the warrior and it's called adrenaline. With enough adrenaline, you can release a special burst attack and with the more adrenaline you have, the more powerful this attack will be. This special burst attack differs for each weapon you're wielding. The warrior can also provide extra bonuses to nearby allies in combat. By placing banners near your allies, you can temporarily increase their attributes. For the Heart of Thorns variant of the Warrior, it will allow you to pick the Berserker Elite Specialization in your trade line. This is basically the skill tree in Guild Wars 2. The Berserker Specialization enhances your current Warrior abilities, gives you the ability to wield an extra weapon, the Warhorn, and grants you a new Adrenaline ability called Berserk. Activating Berserk increases your attack speed for a small period of time and allows you to use an even more powerful Special Burst attack. If you have access to the Path of Fire expansion, you'll get access to the Spellbreaker Elite Special specialization for your warrior. The Spellbreaker specialization grants you the full counter adrenaline ability. This allows you to absorb damage in a dome around you and reflect the absorbed damage right back at your foes. The Spellbreaker specialization also allows you to wield daggers on your warrior. This specialization is mainly focused about countering your foes in combat. Moving on to the second profession on this list, the Guardian. The Guardian is also a heavy armor profession that focuses on damaging foes and supporting your allies. It has features from the Paladin class that can be found in other games. It also features abilities from the original Guild Wars, mainly from the Monk and the Ritualist. A Guardian has access to Virtues. These Virtues can be found above your weapon skills and have passive and active effects. The first Virtue burns foes, the second one heals you and your allies for a small amount, and the third one shields you and your allies. Activating these Virtues will put them on a cooldown and you will be unable to benefit from its perks. Although it may look like the Guardian is a class that can affect heal your allies. It is usually not used for that purpose. The Druid, a specialization that we'll cover later in this video, usually fulfills that role. Having the Heart of Thorns expansion, you can unlock the Dragon Hunter specialization for your Guardian. This allows the Guardian to wield a bow, place holy and light traps, and grant upgraded virtues. The virtue passive effects are basically the same as a regular Guardian. The activation of these virtues is different. Activation of these virtues allow you to hurl a burning spear with the Spear of Justice virtue, or to a leap that results in a major amount of healing with the Wings of Resolve Virtue. This elite specialization allows the Guardian to do effective damage from medium to long range. If you have the Path of Fire expansion, it allows the Guardian to unlock the Firebrand elite specialization. This elite specialization turns you into a walking library. Your Virtue's passive effects stay the same once again, but your active skills do change once again. Depending 
depending on the virtue you activate, you will open a tome that allows you to damage your foes or heal and buff your allies. The Firebrand also unlocks the axe as a weapon to fight with and allows the Guardian to do some more close ranged crowd control. The extra skills you unlock as a Firebrand are mostly Mantras. You can activate Mantras multiple times before they go on cooldown and have a different effect every time you activate them. And that's about it for the Guardian. Let's move on to the Revenant. The Revenant is the last heavy profession on this list and it's a special one. This is because it's only available if you have the Heart of Thorns expansion. The Revenant profession has two unique mechanics and could therefore be a bit harder to get into. The Revenant uses energy to channel its skills and can use the power of legends to do damage to their enemies. These legends are popular characters from the first game and have played a major part in the original Guild Wars story. There are legends that grant you more attack speed and others provide you strong condition damage, which is basically damage over time. The Revenant also comes with an elite specialization in Heart of Thorns. This elite specialization is the Herald. The Herald allows you to invoke the power of Glint, a dragon from the original Guild Wars and champion of the Elder Dragon Krakatori. Using the Herald specialization allows you to wield shields on a Revenant. This allows you to grant protection to yourself and your allies. Invoking Glint allows you to share your boons with other allies and provides a strong crowd control elite skill. The Herald is more of a supportive specialization. If you have a Revenant and you have the Path of Fire expansion, you can unlock the Renegade elite specialization. This allows the Revenant to wield short bows and it allows the Revenant to do damage from mid-range. The Renegade Elite Specialization allows you to invoke the legendary Char, Kala Scorch Razor. Kala allows you to bombard your foes and summon other Char from Kala's Warband that will provide boons to allies and disrupt foes. Moving on to the Ranger, a medium armored class. The Ranger is a profession that allows you to do range damage with throwing axes, longbows and shortbows. But you can also do damage from up close with a sword or a greatsword. The Ranger is quite unique because you will always have a pet with you. This pet can do damage and has a special skill that can do extra damage to your enemies or provide boons that can protect you and your allies. You can only have one pet active at a time, but you can obtain more pets as you progress through the game. Overall, this profession is pretty straightforward. It's relatively easy to get into and I find it very fun to play. Having the Heart of Thorns expansion allows you to unlock the Druid Elite specialization. Having the Druid specialization allows you to wield a staff to deal damage and heal your allies. Currently the Druid specialization is the most common healing specialization. This is because of the powerful Celestial Avatar form you can access for a short period of time. While you're in this form you can do powerful burst healing in a short amount of time. Most of the Druid's utility skills are also focused around healing your allies. The Path of Fire expansion allows the Ranger to unlock the Soul Beast Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization allows you to merge with your pet. Yes, you and your pet become one. The mechanic for this is called Beast Mode. Yes, that's also right, you're going Beast Mode. Going Beast Mode allows you to get three extra pet skills. These skills depend on the type of pet you merge with. You will also get some bonus attributes when you're merging with your pet. And this also depends on what type of pet you merge with. Next to all of this, the Soul Beast also gains access to the Dagger as a main hand weapon. Moving on to the Thief. Our next medium profession on the list. As the name suggests, it's an agile profession that can steal certain effects from its foes. The Thief is loosely based on the Assassin from the original Guild Wars and has a lot of similarities with the Rogue class you can find in other games. Thieves are very effective in one-on-one -on -one combat but can also do a fair amount of AoE damage to surrounding foes. Thieves use a special mechanic called Initiative that will allow them to do damage in rapid succession. Instead of having cooldowns on your weapon skills, you will lose initiative when you're using a weapon skill. The Thief also has the ability to in and out of stealth and quickly engage foes by shadow stepping. This was also a mechanic from the original Guild Wars. If you have picked up the Heart of Thorns expansion, you can turn your thief into a daredevil. A daredevil gets access to the staff as a weapon. You won't use it to shoot ranged projectiles, but instead it will function as a fighting stick. This elite specialization allows you to dodge three times in quick succession instead of the regular two dodges. This allows the daredevil to be even more mobile than the regular thief. And although the daredevil is pretty mobile, the Path of Fire elite specialization of the thief isn't. This elite specialization is called the dead eye and this basically transforms you into a sniper. With the dead eye elite specialization also comes the ability to use a rifle as a weapon of choice. Although you can walk around freely and shoot people with your rifle, you can also take the possibility to kneel and this grants you a whole new set of skills and increased damage. You will basically sacrifice your mobility for more damage. When you attack as a dead eye another unique mechanic comes into play. It's called malice. Some of your skills will generate malice and the more malice you have the more damage you do. It can also be used to reduce the cooldowns of some skills. The Dead Eye may seem a bit confusing at first, but it's an awesome specialization to play. 
Moving on to our last medium profession, the engineer. The engineer is a profession that uses all kinds of technological inventions to do damage. For example, they can use bombs, grenades, rifles, flamethrowers and turrets. And that's just some of the examples to do damage as an engineer. As an engineer, you can also drink potions to grant yourself boons. These are just skills on your skill bar, so there's no extra crafting required. What is unique about the engineer is the tool belt. This is an extra skill bar above your weapon skill bar. The skills in the toolbar are based on the skills that you have assigned in your utility slots. For example, I have the grenade kit as a utility skill, then I would receive the grenade barrage skill as an extra skill in my tool belt. It might sound complicated, but you should get used to it when you try it out yourself. The Heart of Thorns expansion allows the engineer to access the Scrapper Elite Specialization. The Scrapper Elite Specialization uses a hammer to damage their foes. The hammer allows the Scrapper to block, stun, reflect and dash to your enemies. A very powerful and unique weapon if you ask me. With the Scrapper Elite Specialization, the engineer also gets access to gyros. Gyros are small drones that fly around you and can support you and your allies with boons and stealth. They can also do quite some damage by letting them self-destruct near your foes. The Path of Fire expansion allows the engineer to access the Holosmith Elite Specialization. If you ask me, this Elite Specialization has one of the most cool looking animations. By using this Elite Specialization, you will allow your engineer to use a sword in combat. And next to that, the Holosmith has access to the unique Photon Forge mode. While in this mode, you will get a new set of skills that increases the Photon Forge heat bar. If you get past 50% of this heat bar, then most of your Holosmith skills will increase in damage or will increase in effect. These are called Exceed skills and you will find this effect on most of your Holosmith skills. And that covers the medium armor professions on this list. Let's move on to the last section of this video, which are the light armor professions, aka the spellcasters. Starting off with the necromancer. The necromancer is basically the warlock in Guild Wars 2. It was already a very popular profession in the original Guild Wars, and I've played a necromancer for most of my days in the first game. The necromancer's way of dealing damage mostly consists out of applying damage over time to your enemies, or corrupting their boons and turning them into conditions. When something dies around you, it could either be an ally or a foe, then a necromancer gains life force. You can find your life force bar above your weapon skills and this allows you to go into death shroud. Death shroud is some sort of spectral form that replaces your weapon skills for a short period of time and allows you to do damage with the life force you've collected. Popping into death shroud will also give you an extra health bar based on your life force. So, popping Death Shroud when you're almost dead could save you because of the extra temporary health it provides. Another thing the Necromancer can do is summon minions. These undead creatures follow you around for a short period of time and deal damage to your enemies. Each type of minion has a unique skill tied to it and can be activated to heal you or damage your foes. The Heart of Thorns expansion allows the Necromancer to get access to the Reaper specialization. The Reaper Elite specialization allows the Necromancer to wield a Greatsword. This allows you to do effective close combat AoE damage to your foes. Next to that, the Death Shroud will be replaced by the Reaper Shroud. The idea stays the same, your current weapon skills will be replaced and you will receive an extra health bar. This Reaper Shroud is basically the same concept as a Death Shroud. Get some mobility, some crowd control and some skills to do damage. Except, these skills are more focused around AoE damage. Therefore, you can damage multiple foes at the same time. Next to all of this, the Reaper also gets shout skills. Your character will instantly chant a certain phrase that has immediate effect. These are basically instant cast skills. The Path of Fire expansion takes an interesting turn with the Necromancer. The Path of Fire expansion gives the Necromancer access to the Scourge Elite Specialization. This allows the Necromancer to wield a torch. This weapon provides some crowd control and allows you to do some condition damage. The most important thing about the Scourge is that it will replace your Death Shroud and your Reaper Shroud. You won't be able to use it while you are a Scourge. Instead, you have the ability to summon Sand Shades. You can summon three Sand Shades at a time and have abilities that mainly support your allies in combat. Every Shade also applies a small amount of condition damage to surrounding enemies. I guess that sums up the basics for the Necromancer profession. Moving on to the class that I have made since the release of Guild Wars 2 in 2012. We're going to talk about the Elementalist. The Elementalist profession is similar to Mages and Wizards, you might know from other games. This spellcaster uses the four elements to get around. You will be able to attune to one of these elements and these will grant you their own set of skills. Fire is based around heavy direct AoE fire damage, water is focused around support and healing, air is about damage, mobility and control, and earth focuses around damage over time and protection. Since the class can use multiple weapon sets and has different skills for each weapon set, the Elementalist could be overwhelming to new 
fewer players. But if you wanted to give it a try, nonetheless, try the Elementalist with a staff. That's the easiest weapon to start off with. The Heart of Thorns expansion allows the Elementalist to access the Tempest Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization allows the Elementalist to wield a Warhorn as a weapon. As all other professions on this list, the Elementalist gets unique abilities. The Tempest can overload their current attunement. We will briefly go over these. If you are in a certain attunement for a few seconds, then you will be able to overload the attunement by activating the attunement once again. For the fire attunement, you will turn into a fiery tornado that damages and burns foes. For the water attunement, you will turn into a floating bubble that heals allies. For the air attunement, you will summon a thunderstorm that damages and applies vulnerability to foes. And for the earth attunement, it allows you to ride the earth. This allows you to cripple and blight enemies and grant protection to your allies. Like the necromancer, the elementalist also gets some extra shouts as utility skills. The Path of Fire expansion allows the Elementalist to access the Weaver Elite Specialization. Personally, I found this Elite Specialization the hardest to master. As an extra weapon, the Weaver can wield a sword in combat. The sword does a fair amount of damage and has a crowd control ability. But the most interesting thing about the Weaver is that you can combine elements. For example, going into Earth and then into Fire will grant you two Fire Weapon skills, two Earth Weapon skills, and in the middle you will have a new skill based on the two elements. This grants you dozens of opportunities to do damage as a weaver, but it could get overwhelming for newer players. The weaver requires quite some practice to get into, but it's really satisfying if you pull off the right rotation. And if you do, the damage of the weaver will surprise you. Moving on to the last profession on this list, the Mesmer. As a Mesmer, you will have several skills to confuse and mislead your enemies. The Mesmer is able to create clones and phantasms that look like you. Clones can be summoned by using certain skills. They look identical to you, but their damage is very low. Phantasms are illusions that look similar to you, but you can see through them like some sort of ghost. Phantasms can actually inflict a fair amount of damage to your enemies. As a Mesmer, you will see your Shatter abilities above your weapon skill bar. By using these, you will destroy the clones you currently have summoned and it will either damage, confuse or stun the enemy. This all depends on what type of shatter skill you used. There's also a shatter skill that grants distortion. This basically makes you invulnerable for a few seconds. With the Heart of Thorns expansion, the Mesmer gets access to the Chronomancer Elite Specialization. As the name suggests, this Elite Specialization is about managing time. This Elite Specialization will grant the Mesmer the ability to wield a shield. The shield, along with other skills that mainly the Mesmer uses, can provide alacrity to you and your allies. This boon will will reduce the recharge time on most of your skills. Next to that, the Chronomancer is usually the source of a boon called Quickness. Quickness lets you and your allies attack and cast faster, and therefore the Chronomancer is considered a very valuable teammate. Next to that, you can also access a fifth Shatter skill, Continuum Split. By destroying your clones with Continuum Split, you will create a new timeline. In this really short period of time, you should use every possible skill you find useful, preferably the ones with longer cooldowns. And when the time expires, your cooldowns, health, and endurance will be set back to the moment before you use continuum split. This means you can use skills with longer cooldowns in rapid succession. Most of the utility skills of the Chronomancer are based around the idea to slow enemies and quicken allies. Moving on to the Path of Fire Elite Specialization of the Mesmer, and this is the Mirage. The Mirage Elite Specialization allows the Mesmer to use the axe as a weapon of choice in combat. A very special thing about the Mirage is that you will not be able to use your dodging ability. Dodging will be replaced with another mechanic, the Mirage if you dodge as a Mirage, you will gain a buff for a really short amount of time. This allows you to evade enemy attacks for about a second, so it's basically the same as dodging. The difference with the Mirage Cloak is that it opens up a short window of time where you can use a special ambush skill. These will usually replace your auto attacks for just a second and will allow you to do an even more powerful attack. Most of the utility skills of the Mirage are based around the concept of deceiving your foes by shadow stepping or changing your position. And that was the Mesmer. I think that wraps it up for all of the professions actually. I hope this video gave you some insight about every profession and their elite specializations. I also really hope that I've covered the most important aspects of each class. If you have a suggestion or found something that I've missed, please leave it in the comments so I can see it and inform other people. If this video helped you and you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like on this video and tell me what your favorite profession is in the comments. And if you think this video could help your friend or a guildie, don't forget to share it with them. And I think that wraps it up for the whole video. Please leave your suggestions for future videos in the comments and we'll hopefully see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and peace.